and it now gives me great pleasure to hand over to Cheyenne to introduce the next segment by my colleagues at SDSN Southeast Asia. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. My name is Cheyenne Maddox. I'm the Outreach and Events Manager at SDSN, and I'm very excited to be introducing our next session. We are now going to be traveling to Jakarta, Indonesia, where our SDSN Southeast Asia network is hosted. Isra Reddin is the network manager, and he will be our moderator for the next hour. Isra, if you want to turn your camera, let's see, I might have to unmute you. Yeah. Oh. All right. Can we hear you? Yeah, I can hear okay. you. Great. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Sayen. Uh, hello, good morning, everyone, and good afternoon, and probably good evening for all of the, the audience of these sessions. Before we start, let me introduce myself again. I'm Isra Rudin. I'm the Network Manager of SDSN Stories Asia. SDSN Stories Asia is hosted by United in Diversity Foundation, based in Jakarta. And probably you're now listening uh, using your computer speakers by system default. If you would prefer to join over the phone, just select telephones in your audio pens on the control panels. The daily information will be displayed. And you will be have also opportunity to ask and submit questions to today's presenter by typing your questions in the question panes of the control panel. And you may send the questions uh, throughout the sessions and during the presentations, and we will collect and address them uh, during the Q&A sessions at the end of the presentations. And uh, now I would also would love to know where you come from and I would love to uh, send a poll for you to asking whether you come from uh, Asia, Europe, Africa and also Australia and you have uh, probably five seconds to uh, submit your uh, poll. Okay. Okay, another three seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, cool. Um, now I should close the poll and, yep. Uh, yeah, I think most of the participants have come from uh, Asia, 76% uh, and another 16% uh, from America and another one uh, from Europe and also from uh, uh, Australia and Pacific. Thank you and Okay, for, uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank everyone for joining these sessions. And our today's sessions is talking about sustainable lifestyle, saving the earth begins from ourselves. Maybe before we start, I would like to propose a moment of silence to center of our attentions and be at this present moment. Uh, you may close your eyes and breathe normally. Okay, before we going deep into the discussions, I would like to read uh, one quote from an American author and activist, Julia Hills. Uh, he said that you have to hold yourself accountable for your actions, and that's how we're gonna save the earth. And that quote, I think, reminds us that all the fundamental changes are start from ourselves. And this becomes very relevant if you're talking about tackling the climate issues. A study from Dune University in Sweden uh, found out that all the changes in the individual behavior can play a major role in preventing two degrees uh, Celsius in global warming. And a small changes in our life, if we, uh, if it done by so many people, will 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 result about a great effect to our world. And uh, living this lifestyle, I think, uh, not only uh, help us to in terms of uh, our own sustainability, but also uh, maintaining our personal and collective happiness, uh, especially in our current circumstances with COVID-19 outbreak. I think this lifestyle seems makes more sense uh, to be part of our life. Uh, today, we already have uh, our four our, of our speakers that's going to talk about this sustainable lifestyle, and they are not going to only talk about their knowledge, but also share their experience uh, since they've been practicing 
uh, this lifestyle for, for many years. And for our first speaker, let me introduce um, our first speaker is uh, Helga Angelina. Uh, Helga, please turn on your camera. Sure. Yeah, Hi. yeah. Helga is is the co-founder of uh, Burgins, one of the uh, one one of the best uh, vegan uh, chains restaurant in Indonesia. And Here she's gonna that. talk. Yeah, she's gonna talk about the uh, uh, you know plant based uh, food. And our second speaker, so let me introduce uh, Mr. Halim Jiang. Mr. Halim, uh, can you uh, turn on your camera, please? Yeah, yes. uh, Hal Halim Hi. is co-founder of Ray Institute for uh, Fitness Excellence, uh, and she I, and he he's gonna talk about uh, physical health. And we have also another uh, speakers. Uh, let me introduce you, Andin. Hi, Andin. Can you please turn off turn on turn off your camera? Hello. Yeah, uh, Andin is one of very famous singers in Indonesia, and currently he advocates for mental health issue and co-founded uh, Sanggar Jiwa Bertumbuh, along with another co-founders of Sanggar Jiwa Bertumbuh that also already here with us today, uh, Novi Andriani. But Novi, please turn off your camera, please. Hello. Hello. Okay. Hi. Okay. Seems seems we have all good and all the speakers already here with us today. And though I know, I think we, I would like to start our first uh, with our first speakers, which is Helga. Helga, please uh, start your sessions, and then maybe our uh, another speaker, please you can turn off your turn turn off your camera now because uh, we're going to have our first sessions with Helga. Thank you. Helga, right. time is yours. Yes, thank you so much. So I would get help on the slides, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So yeah, uh, hi everyone. Uh, very exciting uh, times that we can uh, discuss um, things like this online and speak to a lot of uh, a lot of people from different uh, parts of the world. So um, as has been introduced by Isra, my name is Helga. I co-founded a healthy plant-based food company in Indonesia called Bear Greens. So we uh, operate restaurants as well as provide um, Asian taste uh, plant-based alternatives. So today I'm going to share a little bit about plant-based diet, what it is, um, and what are the benefits for health, uh, human health and the environment. So if you can get to the next slide. Next. Yes, so a plant-based diet is a basically a diet where most are um, your entire foods come from plants. So uh, you can have a few or no animal products. And when you your 90% uh, of your calories come from plants, you can say that you're on a plant-based diet. So there are many diets that fall into this category and have been proven to provide health benefits for uh, populations that uh, have been doing this for a long time. Whole food plant-based diet is when you basically go 100%. The Ornish diet, macrobiotic diet, the Blue Zones diet, Mediterranean diet, Okinawan diet, and flexitarian diet. So actually, there is a lot of diets that um, 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 fall into this category. And if you can go to the next slide, uh, there are a lot of health benefits uh, that uh, come with a predominantly plant-based diet. And one of them that I want to speak about is about immune system. So there has been this research who wanted, uh, which wanted to know whether what we eat has anything to do with our immune system. And if you can uh, click next, please. <clears throat> next. And next. Uh, yes, might be some delay. So basically this research, um, if you can go back, okay, so that's fine. So this research uh, studied a group uh, of people aged between 65 to 85 years old, so people of um, senior age, um, and they're split into two groups. So one group, it's uh, five servings of fruits and vegetables a day, and one group uh, um, eats a maximum two servings of fruits and vegetables a day. They do this for uh, 16 weeks, and what they found was really interesting, next slide, is that people who eat um, five servings of fruits and vegetables a day have 60% higher immune response. If you can go to the next slide. Next. Yes. So 60% of higher immune response is found from uh, people uh, from it, who eat um, five servings of fruits and veggies a day. And what's interesting is that there was another research uh, that was done for emotional health. 
So they gathered 80,000 respondents and they want to know what do the people with optimum emotional health eat? And what they found is that people with optimum emotional health eat seven portions of fruits and vegetables a day. And one serving is uh, about 80 grams to 100 grams. So it's not that much um, if, you, if you like vegetables and fruits. And if we want to understand how eating more fruits and vegetables um, uh, support our immune system, in, improve our emotional health, um, it's really important to understand the relationship between gut health, our sleep quality, our immune system, and basically everything that regulates our health. So there was this research done a few years ago. It's called American Gut Project. Uh, it was funded, uh, I believe, almost 200 million USD. And they wanted to know what's the relationship between uh, the, gut in, uh, the, the health in our gut and the overall health. And what they found was really interesting, Max. Basically, they found uh, that people who have optimum gut health are the ones who eat 30 to 40 types of vegetables within a week. And um, that's really important if you want to understand immune system. If you can go to the next slide. So um, this is um, how uh, we will understand immune system. Someone who has a strong immune system, um, they, uh, the gut looks like uh, the picture on the top, where we have uh, a lot of good microbiomes um, that are able to regulate um, bad microbes, minimize inflammation, and with, when equipped with vitamins and antioxidants, we are able to protect ourselves from pathogens that are coming in from the outside, such as viruses and bacteria. Whereas imbalanced immune system uh, looks like the one on the bottom, where we have more bad microbes. Um, and when there's pathogen coming in, our body isn't able to protect itself. So we get is sick easily. And um, next slide. This is particularly important because we are in the situation where uh, supporting our immune system is really uh, important. And Chinese researchers have found the link between COVID-19 and gut health. Uh, next, please. So uh, basically in China, they, um, they investigated uh, COVID-19 patients who couldn't make it. Um, if you can go to the next slide. Yes. So many patients of COVID-19 who couldn't make it, they basically have gut dysbiosis. They have more bad microbes, um, and that is why their immune system is weaker than the ones who um, have a stronger immune system. And that um, these researchers advise doctors to actually analyze the nutritional status and gut health of the patients. And next. And they also advise that if we want to increase the survival rate of COVID-19 patients, we need to also treat the nutrition uh, from the nutrition perspective by giving prebiotics and probiotics. Probiotics come from supplements, um, fermented foods. Prebiotics are resistant starches that are found in plant foods, such as legumes, sweet potato, cruciferous vegetables, and whole grains. Next. And um, if we want to understand uh, how zoonotic viruses spread so quickly, um, actually, we can also um, um, understand it from environmental perspective. So there are five factors which makes virus outbreaks like what's happening today is really um, easily happening, right? Number one is deforestation and other land use changes. So basically, forests um, uh, were supposed to be the uh, safe gap between human and wildlife. And wildlife have a lot of viruses, bacteria that um, humans are not um, familiar with. And um, so 70% of the total earth land is used for agriculture. And more than 60% of that is used for livestock. So that is a very uh, land intensive use of um, 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 uh, uh, of producing food. And uh, the second um, cause is intensified agriculture and livestock production. So because of there is so high um, meat uh, and dairy demand, factory farmings are happening around the world. And that is the perfect grounding, um, uh, breeding ground for basically zoonotic viruses to spread between the wildlife to the uh, animals that are being eaten by humans. If we look at uh, MERS, swine flu, SARS, all those virus outbreaks happen here in the factory farming. And the third um, uh, cause is illegal and poorly regulated wildlife trade, uh, basically what happened in Wuhan wet market. 
And then climate change makes it makes the world more hospitable for uh, viruses and bacteria to spread. And then uh, last one is antimicrobial resistance. And this is particularly interesting because 70% uh, of the antibiotics um, production in the world are used for livestock. So uh, the bad bacteria are exposed to this and they grow, they mutate, they mutate and grow into what we call superbug. So when this bacteria infects a human and the human is given antibiotics, uh, the antibiotic that used to work before isn't, is no longer working as effectively because it has been exposed to antibiotics that are used for livestock. So actually uh, our diet has a lot of things, uh, a lot of things, um, a lot of things that are related to climate change. Uh, so animal agriculture is the one of the top three primary causes of climate change when we look at the greenhouse, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So 18% um, of the greenhouse gas emissions come from animal um, agriculture, whereas all the transportation sector combined only contributes to 13%. So changing our diet is just is as important. Hello, Helga, I'm sorry we cannot hear you. Hello, can you repeat please for the last uh, 10 seconds? You might want to try connecting in or disconnecting and then reconnecting your audio, Helga. You just want to click no audio and then computer audio to try that on and off. Me or Isra? We can hear you now, Helga, you're good, keep going. Okay, next. If we can go to the next slide. Yes, so this is how inefficient animal production is. Um, and if we look at how um, there are so many food wastage and loss in the animal food production, um, anyone with business mind engineering background would want to have would want to switch more uh, protein from a plant source because our uh, goal from sustainability perspective is how can we provide quality protein for more people by using less land and less resources next and i particularly love uh, when we uh, talk about healthy and sustainable diet i really love learning about how um, our ancestors did it so there was a research in 2004 it's called blue zones basically it's done by Nat, um, national geographic they wanted to understand who are the longest living people on earth what, where do they live? What do they do? And these are the five spots where one out of three people live up to 90 to 100 years old. So a lot of, uh, you know, like uh, very healthy uh, senior age people. Next. And uh, all these people from around the world um, have different lifestyle factors, but everyone has some things in common. If we can go to the next slide. So this is it. So uh, they are uh, very family centric. They don't smoke. They eat plant based diet. They are socially engaged, they're physically active, and their main protein comes from legumes, beans, which are local uh, to where they live. If we can go to the next slide. And uh, I wanna zoom in on how the uh, Okinawans um, eat. Uh, so on the next slide, uh, we can see that uh, most of the uh, calories of Okinawans people who live uh, the longest are mostly from plants. So 60, uh, 90, 6% of their calories come from plants. Uh, they eat animal protein occasionally um, in weddings and funerals that looks like once a week. And most of their carbohydrates comes from vegetables and sweet potatoes. And their main protein also comes from legumes and soy. Next. And yes, um, just skip this. Uh, if you wanna know more, the longest living population right now is called Hunza tribe. Um, you can just Google it. I just want to go to the next slide. But basically what the Hunza, uh, how Hunza uh, tribe eats exa is exactly like the blue zones. If you can go to the next slide and the next slide. Next slide. Uh, just next, um, like go to more slides. This is what they eat, basically. Can we go to the next slide? Yes. 
So what I find interesting, oh, before, uh, one slide before, I think there, is, there must be a delay from my screen. So if we look at the carbon footprint of the food, um, I find it interesting that uh, the diet of longest living population on earth also have very low carbon footprint. So basically, if we want to compare different footprints from different type, uh, diet types, a meat lover, someone who would eat animal protein three times a day, egg for breakfast, chicken for lunch, uh, beef for dinner, that would have the highest foot, um, the, the highest footprint. And if that person goes uh, no red meat, um, that would reduce the carbon footprint by 30%. If that person goes vegetarian, uh, the uh, carbon footprint is slash by half and if that person goes vegan uh, that would have probably uh, basically the lowest carbon footprint and of course when we talk about sustainability eating local is always the best option but even a vegan who would occasionally eat chickpeas that is imported from another country would have a lower carbon footprint compared to someone who would eat meat that is uh, produced locally next slide and this is my uh, last slide so if we were to answer a very complex question of how can we feed a future population of 10 billion people a healthy diet within our Earth's limits, the answer is really simple. It's a plant-centered diet. And the plate, um, the, uh, so this is a planetary health uh, plate that is made by EAT, Commission on Health, uh, Healthy Food and Sustainable Food. It basically looks like this. 50% of our plate should be vegetables and fruits. 20% of it should be complex carbohydrates that come from whole grains. Our main protein source should come from plants. And if we eat animal product, that should no, uh, be no more than 10% of our total calorie. A little bit of uh, good fat and just a little bit of sugar if we'd like. So um, I think the leading uh, climate change scientists and health professionals have concluded that um, plant-based diet is uh, beneficial uh, for health and the environment. So I think that's what I'll like share. Okay, thank you, Helga. Uh, I think we're now going to our second speaker, which is uh, Mr. Halim. Mr. Halim, can you please uh, turn, off, turn off your camera and start your presentations? Hello, we still cannot hear you. Yes, uh, can you hear? Uh, yeah, I'm okay, we are good. We are good now. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, hi, everyone. I hope uh, I meet you guys uh, in such uh, good condition, in in a he healthy and happy condition, and including you too, uh, Brother Isra. Uh, it's good to see you online, everyone. Uh, let me start my presentation about a sustainable lifestyle. Uh, saving the earth begins uh, with saving yourself. And it's, I'm going to be talking mainly about physical health and how we actually <clears throat> can possess one uh, through physical exercise. Uh, let me just start with the first slide. Yes, what's a healthy body? Kindly to the next slide, please. It's just a heading that I put. Yeah, we know actually there are 12 systems in our body. Um, don't ask me which one. Uh, we have musculoskeletal, we have uh, muscular system, we have cardiac system, we have nervous system, and a lot of them actually work uh, as one. So a lot of these parts or a lot of these systems actually work in unity. So when one is out of uh, control or when one is out of normalcy, then uh, our health will start to deteriorate and it will show some symptoms of unwellness. But don't, don't think of those symptoms as uh, a sign that you are you're ill or don't think of those symptoms I mean as uh, the cause of your illness or problems because the root cause is mostly our lifestyle so whatever we do it has an impact uh, to our lifestyle so basically me someone who personally uh, does a lot of exercise well, not so much, but it's just basically I'm doing it regularly. Uh, 
I, I've reaped a lot of benefits from doing daily exercise for just half an hour. And during this uh, self-isolation time, I have continued to do so. And I haven't gained an ounce. And also my health seems to be in a tip-top condition as it was before. So basically what we are trying to say is, uh, can we go to the next slide, please? <clears throat> that whenever we obey the 12 systems in our body and it may sound it may sound complicated but actually it's not um health, a healthy body is basically <clears throat> when we create pleasantness to our whole body and when our whole body works in optimum efficiency how do we achieve that it is by actually committing ourselves to daily exercise of 15 to 20 minutes or even 30 minutes and just do it three to five times a week. And that should start to give us the right momentum uh, to go along. Why do we start with exercise? Basically, it's quite simple. <clears throat> exercise is something that we do that is actually, uh, that is something that is easy to comply with. Whatever the time we set that we, we should do, it's easier. Like we know there are three basic elements of health. Uh, first one, it's physical exercise. The second one, it's um, proper nutrition. And the third one is actually sleep. And I would say sleep and exercise are the two uh, easier aspects for us to fix. Dieting is a different, ver uh, is a different matter because you eat, say, three times a day and you'll have to face seven days a week so you're faced with 20, 21 times when you have to actually eat properly and Helga has uh, explained a lot about how proper nutrition would actually help you boost your uh, health uh, the challenge is you have to meet uh, eating sessions 21 times a week at least or for most of us and that's quite a challenge to make sure every one of your meal um, healthy. Uh, luckily, with physical exercise, it's not that uh, complicated. What you need to do is just set aside three sessions a week, uh, which is about 15 to 20 minutes, and you can start doing it already. And as I, I usually like to say, if you like brushing your teeth, if you like taking showers, that's actually uh, creating pleasantness to your skin, to your teeth, to your mouth. But how about exercise? Exercise is actually uh, cleansing or creating pleasantness to all those 12 systems in your body. So that's something that we probably uh, forget too, that physical exercise uh, actually is very important in creating all those, uh, creating contributing balance to all those 12 systems. And hence, uh, creating pleasantness to the whole body and hence allowing our body to work in optimum efficiency. Next, uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so what's the relationship of a healthy body with a healthy soul? And we can go on to the next slide, please. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is the Master Shifu. It, uh, I would say he's probably one of the healthier people if he ever existed but i believe uh, nowadays with a lot of us uh, the modern modern society modern civilization starting to look into the past and dig into ancient wisdoms then we can actually uh, agree on these four points can we click on not uh, again please yes when we create pleasantness to our body it is called health and pleasure when we create pleasantness to our mind uh, that is peace and joy when we create pleasantness to our emotion that's love and compassion and when we create life energy is called uh, bliss and ecstasy so yes uh, creating healthy body is also something to do with uh, creating healthy mind pleasant mind pleasant emotion and pleasant life energy and i would say <clears throat> the different some of the main differences uh, between us and also 
our ancient ancestors as we look into ancient wisdoms for happiness uh, we need to also look into ancient wisdom for health uh, physical health look at what our <clears throat> our ancestors uh, did in the past like what they did to survive they would go out hunt their food eat the food or probably still carry uh, the remaining of the food to the cave and feed it to the uh, feed the food to the family so they would go on extensive hunting uh, can you guys still hear me clearly uh, because my uh, my visual seems to freeze here yeah we can still hear you but your your video with us are freeze yeah <clears throat> that's okay go go on Hali. yeah yeah uh yeah we just look into our ancient uh, ancestors they would hunt and what do we do today uh, we don't hunt anymore to to have food on our table it's as easy as uh reaching to your mobile phone to your smartphone and order food from there so instead of hunting for your food uh what we do today is uh we order food and let food come to us so that's a, a, a huge difference <clears throat> and i would say the reason why our ancient our ancestors were strong and healthy uh, is because they hunt their food and that's actually a physical exercise uh, without them realizing it so with us we need to realize that that's a form of physical exercise that we have been missing uh, from our ancestors and therefore uh, we start from something that we can see and we can feel which is our body and i do agree with the doctor from the previous uh, session that said health is the really a really prerequisite for happiness <clears throat> and in order to do so um, we we really need to take care of our health a lot of us we have uh, dreams and goals and with those dreams and goals we know that we have health to to achieve to achieve them but what if your health is taken away from you uh, then all those dreams and goals will diminish and it will only uh, be le you will only be left with one dream and goal which is to be back healthy again so that is actually <clears throat> quite a profound thoughts that i feel uh, hopefully a lot of us are listening and take it to the heart well let's let's go let's go to the next slide please <clears throat> yeah this is an interesting one what's the relationship of a healthy body with protecting nature uh next slide please um, yeah, I believe we are natural beings. So according to some biologists, we are also animals. So we come from nature and will return to nature. Uh, we belong and we are part of and we are one with nature. So we cannot give away what we don't have. I would just like to uh, link all these thoughts into one. And if we don't have the ability yeah. to care for ourselves, how can we care for the environment? Then remember again, we are one with nature so if we cannot care for ourselves <clears throat> how can we give it to others uh, if you are not a healthy mother how can you give health to your kids so uh, i would like to say it that way i am very much intrigued and interested and agree on uh what helga just said too that uh, you need to create less carbon footprint and a lot of those plant uh plant foods i would say not plant foods uh some of those contributors are also drinks uh grains uh cereals uh, you know a lot of those things too that i have eaten less of so i'm allowing myself to have a little bit more of uh uh you know the other the other types of proteins i'm not a big meat uh, meat eater also so yeah, I would say thanks, Helga, for the presentation. So it's actually empowering me. It's actually giving me a good sense of sense, mm, 
well be that I'm actually on the right track. So that I'm also contributing to caring for the environment. Let's next go to the uh, next slide. Yes. Our body is a accumulation of the nature that we consume, which is again uh, in line with uh, materials presented by Helga. So yes, uh, whatever we eat, it is what we become in our physical sense. Uh, and it may also help us in the way we think. I would like to say what we think and what we feel, they are interconnected and each one can come first. Uh, if you're not feeling well, it's highly unlikely that you are not thinking well. But also at the same time, if you actually have a lot of stress in your mind, then you won't be feeling well either. So it goes both ways. And it is basically how we achieve happiness is, I would say, as easy as it, it sounds, is aligning what we think and what we feel. Uh, realize that you have the option, the power, the control to think whatever you want. And you might as well choose within your control whatever you think uh, that makes you happy, that makes you feel pleasant in your uh in your heart or in your all those other things <clears throat> your body uh your emotion your mental your physical well-being as well and next go to the next slide uh, what is needed to start a healthy lifestyle now this is an interesting one i'd like to go a little bit more direct and i apologize if it is actually causing any uh displeasure uh, first, it is the acceptance that our habits or our lifestyle have not been going in the same direction as our desire, need, and want to be healthy. A lot of us say that, well, yeah, it it is uh, important to take care of our health, but alas, you know, we were born with such health already. Health is not something that we achieve. Health is something that we are given freely without putting up a fight or without ever struggling to get it. So we actually um, tend to take health for granted. Uh, and it is reflected in our lifestyles. <clears throat> then we need to accept that. We need to accept that health is important, is uh, basically ends starts and ends uh, in our mouth. Uh, basically, it's just saying then uh, something that we don't follow through. And then we need to also admit that a lot of those habits have not been giving enough pleasantness to our body. And then we just need to act upon it. Just do it. If you were to wait until you have a new pair of shoes, if you were to wait until you know how to do a push up if you need to wait until you know how to uh, do a squat, or if you need to wait until uh, the whole COVID pandemic is over so you can run outside, you'll never wait for the right time. There will never be the right time. The best time, the right time is actually now admitting it that we haven't been as healthy and we just do it. Uh, you don't, you learn by doing you can learn by doing so you don't actually need to wait until you are knowledgeable uh, that's just another excuse a smart excuse uh, to delay or to procrastinate procrastinate and let's uh, move on to the next slide then what's the potential or hope for fitness in indonesia okay i especially uh, would like to just go to the, this next uh, definition of happiness and I'll ex explain why I leave that uh, slide blank. The definition of happiness is basically, I take it from all these ancient wisdoms. The secret of living is actually in giving. So I actually try to dedicate myself, my life to uh, giving a lot. Um, and also, I urge a lot, all the people around me to do the same. <clears throat> and it is also it has something to do with the ability to choose how we <clears throat> respond to things or events. 
uh, we are faced with a lot of uh, disappointments, basically because we have a lot of hopes and uh, those plenty hopes, hopes are plenty. We have them at such high standards. We are setting, basically setting ourselves uh, for disappointments, for assured uh, disappointments rather than happiness. And we normally associate happiness with fulfilling all those hopes and bucket list. So basically uh, what I would urge us also to do is, this may sound weird, but to reduce the amount of hopes that you have and whatever hopes that you have remaining, lower the standards. So you're setting up yourself uh, to be easily fulfilled. Um, yeah, basically that's uh, my stakes or my point of uh, for being happy. You just reduce the amount of uh, potential disappointment. So you have a lot of time and energy left to give or dedicate your life in uh, to giving. And it is connected to the slide before about my hope for uh, fitness or health in Indonesia. I wouldn't like to hope too much. Uh, as we know, uh, we are not moving uh, really well. Our healthcare system, the health, uh, social healthcare system is actually in deficit and the numbers are going up. The numbers, the amount of uh, smokers also are uh, adding up every day. Uh, we see that even, you know, all these big companies uh, give away such uh, products easily and freely for the first time to lure all these first time smokers. So it's not that I'm being pessimistic, but I'm just taking a realistic view uh, so that I don't hope too much. So it's actually beyond my control about the health in Indonesia. What I can control is what I do in sharing and giving, in keep encouraging people to be healthy, and I can do it my way with my platform. I'm quite lucky to say that we have all these social medias and all these publications, and even in this, in the middle of this social distancing and self isolation. I am preparing two books, uh, so I'm still feeling time to uh, using my time a lot more in a lot more uh, beneficial ways. Hopefully you'll see some of my books uh, later after this pandemic is over. Uh, and go to the next slide, please. Uh, is that it? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to also take uh, thank Jim Carrey for this. Uh, he says that everybody should probably get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of so so they can see that it's not the answer a lot of us we spend a lot of our time and a large chunk of our lives uh, pursuing things that at the end are not the answer so let's just sit back for a while and think about it uh, what it is what is it that actually matters to us um, I would like to think about, you know, when we are on our deathbed uh, and looking back in our life, have we actually lived a life that is fulfilling enough and that uh, that actually causing us less regret? Basically, you know, that's probably uh, some of the biggest fears that we look back in life in regret and we don't have time left to rectify it. Uh, so I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, to also remind a lot of our attendees here that happiness is a journey. It is not a destination. Happiness is to be found along the way, not at the end of the road. So for the journey uh, is over, it's too late to, you know, rectify, to try to go back and to fix all those uh, things that we regret about. The time for happiness is today and not tomorrow. And again, to tie in also with the previous speakers from previous session, um, a large part of happiness, the basic, the prerequisites for happiness is actually your uh, the health of your physical body. So again, uh, if you if you don't take care of your body, there's a thing called spirit 
that resides in your body right now that's causing you to live to have this living energy is called spirit if you don't take care of your body if you keep putting junk into your body the spirit will likely not feel well as well like it 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 won't like living in a junk body and that translates into shorter life expectancy so that's basically what i'm trying to say uh hopefully it's uh it's encouraging to everyone uh i know it's here and there but uh the time is limited and we'll probably just pass on to uh the next speaker i think that's probably the end of my slide uh, let's go to the next slide please to see whether we finish the whole presentation oh yes it is then thank you so much for your time and attention i know i've been uh pretty hard so i apologize if there's anything of my talk uh that actually offend you so hopefully uh it's forgiven and let's move on thank you so much yeah okay thank you very much to halim uh yeah now we we, we just listen to our uh, two of our previous speakers talking about uh, plain based uh, uh, food and also from mr halim uh, more specifically about uh, physical health, especially in terms of our COVID-19 outbreak. And now we move to uh, another speaker, but before that, I would like to remind you to, uh, if you have questions in your mind, please drop and type your questions on the question thing of the control panels, and then we will address the questions after the discussion, okay, after the presentations. And now we move to another speakers. Uh, maybe Andin, please uh, turn off your camera. Yeah, our next uh, presentation is probably uh, going to, uh, uh, you know, going to, uh, you know, to, to discuss about the most likely about mental health issue and also another, uh, more, maybe more to spiritual things that we cope during, especially uh, in, in this uh, kind of pandemic uh, outbreak. Uh, yeah, time is yours. Uh, Mandy and also Banovi, please start. All right. Thank you, Isma. Can you hear me? Yeah, we yeah. can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much. It's a very interesting presentation from Helga and also uh, Mr. Halim. Yes. And uh, as has been introduced by Isra, my name is Andin and I can say that um, I actively promoting the mental health awareness issue these days. And I'm not alone here. I'm with uh, my partner from Sanggar Jiwa Bertumbuh, named Nofi. And um, yeah, we, we, we try to give a, a little uh, perspective from the inside of spirituality, or or maybe you can um, say it in in-depth psychology. So uh, maybe Manofi uh, will answer the first question. All right. Uh what is a healthy soul? Each one of us is a unique combination of DNA code, unique combination of time and space, beliefs and failures, mission and purpose. And this whole unique combination influences human in daily life, holistically, mind, body, soul, and spirit. And a healthy soul is a maybe it's from our perspective yeah it's an individuation journey to awareness mindful and ability to reconnect or align all of this aspect to enhance sense of a deep meaning and sustain greater level of uh, fulfillment in the different areas of our life uh, just like what uh, miss helga and also mr halim uh, about uh we are being aware of what we eat aware of our body sensation uh what of uh, our body needs for example and aware of our bad and uh, good habits it's also a example for uh, awareness and being mindful and i think we have to ask ourselves why i am here really and in service to what what is my authentic self capabilities are? What is thought, feelings, and behavior pattern play a role in the present state of my life, including the result that I am experiencing? For example, in this pandemic period, 
what is the message and learning here for me or even for society? The answer of all those questions is a sign that you have a healthy soul. It is, of course, essential for us humans to have a fair knowledge of ourselves. Uh, and yes, of course, for anyone who doesn't understand uh, himself or herself cannot understand others. So okay. it's more like you are communicating with, with your inner self, right? To uh, to create, no, to uh, to have a healthy soul. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, maybe for you uh, who doesn't really understand about the individu individuation process, it's uh, from the perspective of, of Carl Jung. It's a simple or complex by which every living organism becomes what it was destined from from the very early age or from the birth to become from the very beginning to increase the individual's uh, consciousness, individual level of consciousness. And um, for the second question, um, how does a healthy soul affect human relations with nature, humans, and spirituality? So we are all part of larger collective and transpersonal uh, realities. And this larger reali realities exist because each of us exists. And an um, individual's personal reality is influenced by the state of collective and also transpersonal realities. And so vice versa. Each one's present state influences the overall state of the collective and transpersonal realities. And if you have a healthy soul, you are aware of this wholeness. And this awareness promotes an expanded sense of the self, the big self, in which you can experience a deep sense of everyone. So everything being interconnected. And with a deep sense like that, empathy toward others flow naturally and effortlessly. So you don't have to push it or something like that. You find yourself relating to people meaningfully, identifying their needs and values, as well as being able to truly hear and accept them without prejudice or judgment. As your sense of connection with yourself and between you and others continues to deepen, compassion arises. For example, you may sense and uh, identify how somebody is suffering and you approaching them with gentle care and kindness. And for nature, you can sense if our mother earth is suffering and you approaching her with a new and healthy lifestyle that encourage sustainable living like minimize plastic usage in daily life. So I personally agree with uh, with most of what Mr. Halim and Helga ha have told us, but let's not be trapped in our ego, right? So um, is there any ego traps uh, in terms of spiritual spirituality and in in your uh, perception? towards this, uh, how uh, we can we can distinguish uh, between uh, spirituality and ego traps because some people uh, like uh, they know about the spiritual and uh, they also, um, what they call that, uh, practice the spirituality, but uh, there's uh, some ego trap behind of that uh, spirituality that what we call spiritual bypass maybe you can uh, give us some example about the ego trust in terms of spirituality uh, i lost your audio and then we lost your audio okay and yeah, now okay okay but i i still cannot see myself but it's okay so um okay so we're talking about the what's the difference between the spirituality and and ego traps 
because uh, because I uh, I I find I find the it's 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 really happening now in in our society. So it's it's like this. If you think it's more spiritual to ride a bike to work or use public transportation, but then you find yourself judging anyone who drives a car because blah 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 blah. Okay, so now you're in uh, in an ego trap. Or maybe if you think it's more spiritual to do yoga, become a vegan, buy organic, buy healing crystals, Reiki, meditate, wear uh, some thrift thrift shop. Uh, clothing and then you judge anyone who doesn't do those things you're definitely in an ego trap so it's a it's a it's a thin line between it's a thin but thick line between the spirituality and ego trap so um, spirituality you do it because because your inner self uh, Tell, tells you to do it because you you believe uh, that is uh, that is what's good for you and good for your soul and can create a a, a, a one happy soul and one healthy soul and uh, it's, it's it's good for your uh, uh, for your soul to grow like that. So Can you still hear? Be aware of, the okay. of superiority, yeah. I guess, in ego trap. Yeah, 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 yeah. We should, we, we, we all should be aware of the feeling of super superiority. So uh, it's your biggest clue that you are an ego trap, because the ego loves to, you know, sneak in the back door, and it will take a noble idea like 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 starting up yoga because everyone. Uh, everyone is doing that and um maybe and then twist it to serve its own ends by making you feel superior to others that you that you are better than the others and you will start to look down on those who are not following you and your righteous spiritual path because everyone say it's spiritual so you're you um yeah we all know that that happiness comes from within right it's it's not from 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 somebody else and not from the society not from the uh how society uh look at you or uh tells that uh you know like wow well, you're so spiritual you're so you're so um yeah you're so caring for 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 the earth and 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 the nature it's not like that it's uh the compassion comes from within all right so can you hear me? where's my camera <laughs> okay okay so we're going to uh the next one so how can a healthy soul build a more peaceful and prosperous world? So emerging from your sense of connection with yourself and everything continues to deepen. Your perspective continue to, you know, shift, becoming more aware of the causes of your present life cir cir circumstances, personality traits, behaviors, health, relationships, including how you relate to money and prosperity and how you see abundance occupation as well as your level of fulfillment happiness well-being etc etc so the transpersonal realm can be thought of as the world of causes and the material material realm it's it's your physical life is the world of effects you will fully enjoy to connect with yourself and everything and you can embrace what inside and outside, you know, to be good or bad, light and dark, positive or negative. Uh, so you find your polarity. It's, a, it's, it's, it's the oneness. And you embrace and accept who you truly are. So everything becomes natural. So you see 
uh, the world and society and accept who they truly are. So the participatory uh, perspective will arise, creativity flowing gracefully without any limitation and a manifestation uh, come day by day to our own life. As we can see manifestation flowing so we can see the world is full of abundance which leads the feeling of our life is peace and prosperous. So what can be done together to help fellow humans build healthy souls? Maybe Manofi can, can answer this. All right. Um, maybe the answer is, uh, let's start with ourselves first. True. Start with your individuation journey to becoming whole and being your authentic self. Because throughout this journey, you will experience openness, awareness, mindfulness, multisensory per perception, multidimensional perspective, heightened creativity, and a deep sense of interconnection, which it which in turn promotes inclusivity, mutuality, empathy, and compassion, and also prosperity. Just imagine a world with more of these qualities in everyday life. And yes, together we can co-create a brighter present and future through generating awareness, collaboration, and also compassionate movement. And it starts with you, it starts with me, it starts with us. The world needs you, the world needs me, and also the world needs us. Let's be the change maker together, fellas. Yay! <laughs> so, the final question is, the, what is your definition of happiness? Our definition of happiness. So, yeah, Mr. Halim, uh, left it to the blank page because maybe there no not maybe there is no simple black and white to answer this question and maybe our perspe uh, perception of happiness is you know often blurred with a perfect life or ideal state that we keep pursue from our very young age or little age from the movie or for the from the society from from our friends we have a cultural bias toward happiness. So the prevailing belief is that we are supposed to be happy most of the time. And when we are not, something is missing. So how often have we said, I just want to be happy. I deserve a happy life. And what is your dream? It's to be happy. What is your goal? It's to be happy, to reach happiness. How often have we said, I just want to make you happy. I just want to make my kids happy. I just want to make my parents happy, my society happy. But have we already clear about exactly what a happiness is? Yeah. So uh, maybe we can, you know, uh, take a gentle breath and then you can go inside and ask yourself, where is your happiness state right now? Do you feel happy? Am I feeling happy? If you're not feeling happy, how do you feel about that? Do you accept that you and yourself not feeling happy? Do you accept that you are feeling happy right now? Observe your feelings carefully and let's be honest. And if you're feeling happy, let's keep feeling happy. But if you aren't feeling happy as you hear this, do you notice any tension in your body? Or maybe do you, you know, do you recall something from the, 
from the past, from your trauma, from your kid's life. So we should be happy. There must be something. So when we got a question, what is happiness for us? Well, from our journey and experience, we both agree that happiness is when you in your life fulfill your needs. In other words, happiness comes when you feel satisfied and fulfilled. Happiness is a feeling, is a feeling of contentment that life is just as it should be. Perfect happiness, enlightenment comes when you have all your needs satisfied. It is as it should be. Well, since happiness is when your life fulfills your needs, the next logical question is, where are my needs? And um, maybe we can take a look at the Maslow hierarchy of needs. Mas Isra, can you help? Uh, yeah, can you, can you show, show the, the presentation, please? The slide. Yes. On the Maslow hierarchy of needs. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so Maslow hierarchy of needs often called as a happiness pyramid. So you can tell where am I right now? Do I already fulfill this? the bottom of the pyramid, or maybe I haven't fulfilled the top of the pyramid. You know yourself better. You know yourself the best. And you can answer this and go within and go to your inner self and ask yourself. Then you find your happiness because of the fulfillment of yourself. Maybe Manofi wants to add something? Yeah, maybe uh, for just the exercise, if um, maybe someone uh, right now uh, cannot feel that happiness inside and don't know uh, which hierarchy of, of needs that uh, they need to be fulfilled. Maybe we can do the uh, uh, write down uh, first what uh, you are grateful for over the past years, maybe like uh, the small and the big things, and make your list as uh, long as possible. From your list, please just select the five blessings that you are mo most um, grateful for. Just reflect on these five blessings and cherish them in your heart. Feel it. Okay. It. <laughs> just like that. And also write down all the difficult experience that you had over the past year. Just reflecting on the whole is what can you learn? is freezing okay. now. Check, 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 check. Yeah, we still, we, we can hear you. Yeah. I can hear you okay. again. Go on. Okay, and how can you integrate what you have learned in a way that helps you to uh, accept what you have gone through, like uh, all of those um, difficult experiences? And also write down what you want to let go of so that you don't carry that with you beyond this year, this year especially. Just reflect on this list and then imagine you're, you're releasing all of the energy associated with those old things. Uh, it might be appropriate just to take specific action that enable you to completely move on, free of unnecessary baggage, do what's right for you, do what's right for your uh, the smallest tribe, like your family maybe, but without causing any harm. Just imagine how you might ex experience yourself at the end of the coming year, should you achieve the year of your dreams? 
just step into this image of yourself being the way you truly want to be. And just feel the energy of this. Then ask yourself what your next step will be to fulfill this state while being of positive value to the lives of others and also to the world. Just commit to taking that step and look forward to how it will create mutual success momentum throughout the coming year. I guess that's all. From okay, thank you so much, uh, Nofi and Andin. Uh, we yeah, just conclude you. our uh, our third presentations about mental health and also spirituality. And now we're going to move on to our uh, discussions and answer. Uh, I would like to invite all the speakers to turn off your camera, please, and join with us to our question and answer sessions. Okay, Mr. Halim, maybe you can turn off your camera and show your face. Okay. Okay, now we have several questions that already been asked by all by the participants, but I, I would like to have some time to choose the uh, the best questions that I would like to ask. Okay, maybe first questions I would like to ask. Um, it's from Rusma uh, to Helga, I think, yeah? Uh, maybe the first to Helga. Helga, can you answer the, these questions? I think uh, Rusma asking uh, how to... Uh, yeah, how to promote, uh, you know, a, this healthy uh, eating habits uh, in the middle of a lot of uh, advertising of the junk food and also from big companies that are promoting uh, non-healthy food. Maybe you can share your experience. Just a short uh, answer. Helga, it looks like you're muted. You may need to unmute. Sorry, yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a very good question. Um, actually, uh, you know, in uh, food delivery platforms here in Indonesia, the top 10 uh, best selling items are all junk food. Uh, so I think, you know, for healthy food, uh, the key to uh, market the lifestyle is really true market education. If people know uh, the direct link between what they eat with their immune system emotional health their quality of sleep everyone wants to be healthy especially these days right so um i would say um do um uh, market education uh make it fun and i really like um uh, the angle that uh, mas halim brought that you want to nourish your body because you love your body instead of focusing on um being afraid of, uh, you know, what are uh, the the side effects of eating uh, like uh, junk food. So really focus on, you know, like um, uh, abundance mindset. When you eat healthy, there's a lot of options. You can get really creative. You feel good, um, and it tastes good. Okay. Uh, thank you, Helga. Now we to, we we move on to an, uh, our next questions. It's from, um, maybe it's for uh, Andin and also uh, Nofi. Uh, maybe one of you can answer these questions. From Depti Singh, uh, what is the difference between relative and absolute happiness? Nofi? Relative. Relative happiness is, uh, uh, I guess, um, maybe because of the, uh, the state of happiness is, different for each person just because from our perspective and our experience even um, when our client uh, come into my room I always ask what's what is their goal from this uh, session uh, they just want to feel happy peaceful but actually it's a different from each person or each client but um, even uh, they don't know what is happiness. They don't even uh, can um, describe what can happiness that, that they want. So I guess uh, the absolute happiness, it's uh, more to uh, uh, the, the, the needs that uh, can be fulfilled. Uh, if let's say you, you can fulfill your needs, then you can feel the joy, you can feel the happiness, you can uh, feel the, 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 the state of um, some achievement, uh, that you can feel satisfied and be fulfilled and feel content. So uh, 
that's uh, the absolute happiness maybe in the that's from our perspective uh, but for relative yes because every person uh, has uh, their own uh, perception about the happiness and so they have the uh, different needs and also they have different um, maybe different uh, uh, experience or maybe they have uh, some uh, emotional trauma we never know yeah or maybe I can say that uh, the relate relative happiness it's a it's it's a it's some kind of short-term pleasure it relies on something else like you know things cars houses or or something very materialistic and uh, the absolute one is is uh, it, it doesn't rely on 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 uh, on something else it doesn't rely on people or or your goals or, or places or things or something like that it comes from within it uh, the absolute happiness is is because you 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 feel content yourself okay uh, thank you Andin and uh, Nofi yeah. and now I'll move uh, I'll move to the next questions maybe it's from uh, Mr. Halim uh, yeah the question is I think it's related to COVID uh, our current condition with COVID-19 um, actually after these sessions what directly we can do at our home uh, to improve our physical health maybe a simple thing that you, you can suggest to all of us uh, that we can do after this session right away oh yeah uh, thank you for the question uh, basically we can exercise at home uh, like I said we don't need to wait until we have a new pair of shoes or we have a pair of dumbbells or we have a certain set of equipment but what we can do is to use our body as uh, the challenge and we can do push-ups plank is probably the easiest uh, thing we can do uh, just challenge yourself and see how many seconds you can do and you can start doing it while even listening to this uh, do some planks, do some push-ups, do some squats or even abdominal crunches. Uh, try to feel it in your muscles uh, instead of feeling it in your joints. Don't go for counts, but go for feelings. Don't go for the numbers. Don't go for repetitions, but uh, go for what you feel in your muscles. Uh, that's what you can do. And basically, uh, the movements need to be uh, smooth. Need, they need to be slow and they need to be focused and second thing is also uh, something that's not that immediate when we need to go out to get our groceries try stocking up on vegetables and you know good quality proteins instead of all these uh, packaged foods or processed foods uh, a lot of us uh, when we think of the time of uh, social isolation or social distancing uh, we tend to uh, to stock up on a lot of these processed foods because we think our day may be more durable there's an expiry date a uh, longer expiry date than the fresh food but uh, basically it's not helping our health uh, we are feeding our body with processed foods and feeding our mind with all these negative news about how many victims of COVID already adding up every day, that is actually uh, making us more sick and ill. Uh, basically, yeah, what we can do in terms of physical health and exercise, yeah, we can do plank squats, uh, abdominal crunches, and, and so forth. Uh, we do need to also think of what we put into our body uh, and what we put into our mind. And when we start doing that, um, you know, start embracing also the time we have now to, to rest more, uh, to sleep more and look within instead of looking outside. I think those are some of the steps that people can do to uh, instantly improve their well-being and happiness. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Halim. Now, I think I move to uh, next questions, uh, probably to Helga. Uh, the questions are from, wait, wait, uh, check. Uh, the questions are from uh, yeah, Rusma. Uh, the question is, uh, if uh, I, I spend all of my life eating junk food and uh, 
that that make me afraid to start to eating to to have more healthy uh, food to eat. And what do you think about it? And, and is it is it affect uh, I mean the the rest of my life if I change my habits uh, after spending a lot of years eating junk food? Okay. Um, so uh, the, the beauty of uh, I think uh, healthy eating is that the effect is quite instant. So uh, once you do it for three weeks, uh, you have made a new habit and um, actually you, you start feeling better. Actually, just after a week changing your uh, diet from a lot of junk food and processed food to more whole food, uh, predominantly plant based, um, eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, aim for uh, five portions of fruits and vegetables a day and 30 types of plants a week, you would already feel the difference. But if we want to go uh, quite technical here, um, it takes um, a few months to change the population in your gut. So if you've been eating a lot of junk food, um, I would assume that um, um, you, the, the microbes in your gut um, have been fed with, uh, the, the ones who have been fed with processed food are the bad microbes, right? So when you want to uh, start changing that population and you want to have more good microbes, uh, you can start by um, introducing probiotics. So it's like a starter uh, to, to kind of populate the, to kind of increase the population of good uh, bacteria. And then you eat a lot of uh, prebiotics, which are uh, the rest and starches from the plants, right? Legumes, cruciferous vegetables, like broccoli, um, um, uh, cruciferous vegetables too, uh, pok choy, um, um, all those with like strong fibers and then you um, basically when, once you're feeding them um, it will grow and um, I've actually uh, done a little uh, experiment on myself um, and uh, when I change my when I increase uh, the variety of my plant foods within a week uh, for uh, every week um, and then I did a gut health test um, a month later my gut bacteria has improved so it's actually quite instant um, and you, there is no there shouldn't be no fear about changing your diet to a healthier one okay thank you Helga uh, and attention to all of the audience I'm so we so sorry we cannot uh, answer all the questions all, all of your questions because we have time limit but probably before we end these sessions, I think this this will be our last questions uh, that probably I will ask to all of the uh, uh, speakers. The question is from uh, Harris Francis. Um, I would like to conclude the sessions by Helga, Halim, and Andy as the triangles of happiness consisting of healthy food, healthy body, uh, and healthy soul spiritually. My question is, how can a person balance the triangles of happiness accordingly based on his or her ability or affordability in accessing all of the three, uh, the, the three key points in the triangle of happiness? So uh, you, you got the point. I think this, this, this one is very good. He, he, uh, he tried to conclude all the discussions at, uh, between uh, you know, have happy soul, happy body, and also happy, uh, happy food. Uh, as a triangle of happiness and um, the questions from our franchise is how we can balance of the, all of the three based on our own affordability and our own ability uh, maybe uh, we can start from uh, Sahali first yeah oh yeah thank you um, I would say uh, starting a new lifestyle uh, a healthier one uh, shouldn't be an expensive experience so it should be affordable and all it takes is uh, goodwill from ourselves to start it, uh, to admit, like I say, to admit that we have been living somewhat an unbalanced and unhealthy lifestyle. And life is a long, uh, is a lifelong journey. So in, in search of balance, we, we don't need to really, you know, find the right balance or anything because everything tends to be not balanced anyway. Uh, what I'm saying is uh, we have 168 hours in a week seven times 24, that's 168 hours. And it only takes one and a half hours to exercise, three times 30 minutes or three times 15 minutes if you want to start with that. Uh, and as soon as you realize with a mathematical uh, equation, it's less than 1% of your total time. Basically, it's not balanced, but 
you know what exercise can do? It can improve the rest of the 99% uh, in your week. And basically, uh, it's, it's a good point to start. And I totally agree with uh, the rest of the speakers that, you know, um, achieving it is basically uh, having a, a sense of uh, peacefulness in your mind uh, to actually communicate with yourself. And I would say, on my perspective, on my point of view, reduce your expectations uh, to basic necessities exactly. You know, we, we tend to have too many wants, uh, but we forgot about our needs. And we need basically to be healthy, uh, to have a good shelter, uh, and, you know, to get, uh, to have uh, something to wear on. And basically that's, uh, those are the three things that when we have fulfilled and, you know, we should feel a lot of gratitude already. Uh, yeah, and I'll hand on to some of the other speakers to continue on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Halim. And maybe now uh, going to Andit. Yeah, so in my point of view, if you have a healthy connection with your soul, compassion will arise and uh, you will be a, you know, a compassionate person. Compassion not only with other person, but with your own body, with your own soul, with uh, with your own self. So I guess uh, compassion leads you to, you know, another level, another level of a balanced life because, you know, uh, exactly a balanced life needs a compassionate, um, a compassionate soul and, uh, and, also a healthy body. Okay, uh, thank you, Andy. And maybe now uh, we can move to uh, Manofi. Oh, we still cannot hear you, Manofi. Please turn on your audio. Okay, uh, from my point of view, maybe uh, I just uh, may uh, add some uh, from what uh, Andy uh, uh, already said. Uh, maybe for the balancing of those uh, this three triangle yeah uh, triangle aspect yeah uh, I guess it's we should know first uh, what is your state now I mean uh, what should be balanced among those three so after that uh, which step that I have to take for balancing all those uh, triangle aspects. I guess then we just act. Let's do it. Let's it. Okay, thank you, uh, Nafi. Now we move to the last speakers, which is Helga. Maybe you can also conclude all the, uh, you know, the, the, the discussions and also the uh, opinion from other speakers, Helga. Um, I actually resonate a lot with uh, what um, everyone has shared today. Um, I think uh, good well-being is um, integrated from, you know, like um, nutrition, movement, um, and healthy soul. Uh, I would say uh, just uh, start from um, whichever aspect that resonates with you the best. And um, I also think that um, health shouldn't be expensive. I mean, if you move movement costs nothing right you just start moving yourself um feeding your soul with uh, positive thoughts positive emotions doing good things that um you like um it's it's free um and if we are able to practice um you know feeling the absolute happiness that Anin has mentioned it's free right it doesn't rely on anything um you can have like just um, enough money to have like a simple life but you can access that absolute happiness as long as we practice it and for nutrition if you go for local food that's super cheap you know like uh, a broccoli or a spinach costs what like uh, less than one dollar uh, for uh, for two times of eating right so I think just start where um, um, from whatever resonates uh, from you the, um, the best and um, uh, be compassionate with yourself I totally agree with Ma Andin um, you know like acknowledge progress over perfection and once you start uh doing it more consistently and from the intention of nourishing your body and your soul instead of um 
having an, an, um, a specific goal that is tied from external. For example, you want to you want to look good because you want people to um, tell you that you're pretty. Uh, I think that would um, be a more uh, painful way to to start um, building healthy um, habits. Uh, as opposed to if you say I love myself, I want to be healthy, and I just want to do things that feel good uh, to uh, to me. So uh, I think that's uh, how I see it. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you very much, Alga, and also thank you for all the speakers. Maybe um, all of the audience, I can uh, conclude all the discussions of our sessions. Uh, I think I cannot say more words rather than just start now. You know. To start from yeah. ourselves, you know what? As what I mentioned in the middle, uh, in the beginning of our sessions, that uh, maybe it's little things because it's done by by one people, but you can imagine if it's done by so many people, it probably gonna change the world. So maybe that's uh, uh, could be our as our conclusion for today's sessions. Uh, once again, thank you very much for all the speakers, Mbak Novi, Mbak Andin, Mbak Helga, Mbak Salim, all the audience from all over, all over the world. Thank you.